800 We'd love to talk real estate. Follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and wherever you listen to podcasts at Talk Real Estate Roundtable. If you would like a one-on-one -on -one consultation with me and my team or one of the dedicated agents at Boston Connect Real I'll Estate to discuss can. your real estate needs, well, you can connect now. with us Silly at bostonconnect.com or 781-826-8000. Now, sit back, relax, take good notes, and let's talk real estate. And hello to all my South Shore neighbors. My name is Melissa and you are listening to Talk Real Estate Roundtable. And guess who's joining me tonight? It's me. It's Hi, you. Hi, it's me. Hi, it's I'm you. I'm the problem. Me. <laughs> You're not the problem, but you did almost give me a heart attack. <laughs> Like, seriously? At least I knew. At least I knew. I was good. Yeah. I prepared you for it. So yesterday I had uh, asked Kristen Howlett uh, to, you know, do the show with me tonight. And then she texted me early this morning. I think I was even still in bed. And she's like, I totally forgot. I have plans. I do this, this, and that. And I'm like, okay. So I texted you. And, you know, obviously you said yes. But then at 430, you're like, don't panic. <laughs> do, do not. I will be there, but it will be right before the show. Yeah, and I was like, on you wheels. have got to be kidding me. Yeah. You've had all day. Well, You've had all I day. was working. I know. In our topic. I know. But you know what? You, you, I should be your priority. <laughs> you are. I, I made it. <laughs> you and I did. I didn't get a speeding ticket. You did make it by the, by the skin of your teeth. Chinny chin chin. Yeah. The hair is on your chinny chin chin. Right Why is the saying skin of your teeth? Mm, I don't know. Is it reference to your enamel? <laughs> like, I don't, know. I don't know. Who do we ask that? Like, do we a ask dentist? the dentist? If know. there's any dentists out there that want to, or um, what's the history that behind that? Uh, to give us a little bit of in yeah. information on that folklore or whatever that is. I don't know. Whatever it is. Yeah, Anyways, hair of Machini Chin Chin. <laughs> but, well, for those of you who don't recognize her voice, <laughs> <laughs> Mary Baker is joining me tonight. Hello, Mary. Hi, I'm Hi. excited. And I just said Mary Baker, even though you just said upstairs. So I, I, everyone knows that I am, manage Boston Connect Real Estate, and I also do all the finances. So I write everybody's checks. So everybody loves me. <laughs> um, but for the past, You're what? everybody's favorite person. I'm everybody's favorite person because I pay them. Um, but for the past, what, five years, I've been writing Mary Horton, even yeah. before you guys were engaged, yeah. not on the checks so because you, you wouldn't have been able manifested. to, you wouldn't have been able to cash them yet yeah. <laughs> if I wrote them on the checks, but on the envelopes, I've always written Mary Horton and you asked me upstairs cause today was payday for you. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, you asked me upstairs, what are you, how are you going to feel when you write Mary Horton for the first time? And I'm like, I, probably and the same. But it's real. Probably the same because I've been doing it for five years. <laughs> um, anyways, but why don't you sort of uh, tell everybody what we're going to be talking about tonight while I get us set up on Facebook. Okay. Absolutely. Um, so we thought it would be fun. We've been wanting to do a new a show on new construction for a while now. Um, but for one reason or another, you know, other things have taken precedence. So um, tonight we're going to be doing our show on pretty much all things new construction with um, just a high level overview of what the process looks like, um, different financing options that are available to you, what you should be looking for when you're talking to developers about new construction, some new construction um, products and um, neighborhoods that we have that are coming or developments that we have. Um, and obviously speaking from firsthand experience when we're talking about um, going through the steps and going through the motions. And then we'll also um, uh, tippy toe into tippy toe. Tippy toe. I was going to say <laughs> dip, dip our foot into um, talking about buyer agency as it pertains to new construction and how what um, how a buyer's agent is beneficial to you um, and what they do for you, because I think there's a misconception with new construction that you might not need a buyer's agent or they aren't as valuable or as important when going through new construction. And we want to put that rumor to squash. To, to well, squash? To squash. What to kind of squash? squash? I like butternut squash. <laughs> Roasted spaghetti butternut. Squash. Spaghetti squash. I don't love well, spaghetti squash. I'm, I'm pretty sure I've made it a couple of times and you liked it. I ate it. <laughs> I wouldn't ask for it again. I, I, you know, I eat it because you're so kind to make me dinner, um, <laughs> and and I love what you put into it. Um, it's all the it, love that counts. It's the love that you put into it, but um, it's not my favorite thing. I think, but the meatloaf is is my favorite that okay. you make. All right, well, you make it now. I do. 
I stole it. it although it takes me like eight hours to make it because I'm like, I'm so bad. I'm like Tough reading recipe. it. Yeah. Um, anyway, so yeah, so new construction. I know we've done a couple shows on this and sort of. I feel like no matter, but I feel like, sorry to cut you off. I feel you like did. No, ma no matter when we talk about it, though, I don't think we ever, um, we don't ever get to all of the talking points and all of the different nuances and how much there really is to know. It's when I say it's a completely different world than your resale um, or traditional residential home sale, it truly is. There's a lot more that you need to know. That's why buyer's agents are important. <laughs> Just well, we'll, we'll get to that part. But what I was going to say was I know that we've done, uh, you know, several shows on new construction. It's it's ever changing. Um, like you said, it's it's more sort of convoluted, but it can be so much fun. Um, it, more convoluted than a resale of a home. Um, but, you know, when we had Copperwood in Bristol, I felt like I was definitely more involved than I am right now. Um, I'm so far removed. So no matter how many uh, shows that we do, I, I sort of, I learned something new from you. So um, what, what's the first thing that you want to talk about? What, <laughs> you know, I know that you sort of right now, new construction consumes your life um, in a good way. Yeah. But, um, and, you know, maybe start with that. Like how, yeah. how does new construction um, sort of fit into your real estate world right now? So our team um, is marketing for Stonebridge Homes. We have two communities that we are representing them on currently. So um, actually, this is kind of breaking news because one of them I'm about to tell everybody about. Breaking ground with Break. new construction. Oh, that's it should have been that should have been the topic. Breaking ground with new construction. <laughs> oh, that's okay. We'll, we'll just get rewind to time, yeah. and that's the name that's of the show. That's the new topic of our, our new name of our show. Um, breaking ground with new construction. So, so um, current, currently, we are marketing Cochisa Estates in West Bridgewater. Um, we are a community that comprises of both single-family homes and um, duplex-style homes, so attached homes. Um, and we've been there for just under a year, I would say, or just about a year. And we actually today, I was at the Stonebridge office from since about one o'clock. Um, and we were going through, we're building a single family home that we're kind of putting a lot of really fun, cool, trendy, but still appealing to the masses um, design into. And it's it's going to be a beautiful home. It's 3,400 square feet, four beds, two and a half baths, um, flat, flat lot, nice, able to fence in the yard. Um, and it will... I don't know. I'm just excited. Beautiful for views there too. Be absolutely gorgeous views, and actually, so Cochise Estates abuts a Bay Circuit Trail that's called Cochise Trail, um, and it has all of these different like bird watching views, and it abuts um, some conservation, and it has access to um, several different trail pipes that you can kind of jump onto and go hiking or walking. Um, I know that's super appealing to me because I like to take Dexter for long walks and recently I walked him for like an hour back there and I had to turn around because I was going to get lost. So <laughs> you, you can definitely um, go for a nice long walk um, back there. But so what I was doing today is picking out all of the selections that are going to go into this house and we were literally so myself, the site foreman, the selections manager and the builder, um, we were there for again since one o'clock going through every detail of this house to design it for what we feel is current and what we feel is appealing to a buyer all while trying to maintain um, an appropriate budget for the things yeah. that were going in there so it took us five hours and we weren't even fully complete and we went through like electrical plans and framing plans and we made framing changes we're vaulting a ceiling now mm -hmm. so there's just and I looked around at everybody at one point and I go, you know what this means? Because we all had differing opinions. Yeah. <laughs> we all had differing opinions. You put four people in a room. So we had two don't... women and two men? Yep. Yeah. Um, and men that are very savvy with design. So they're not just saying like, oh, just do whatever you want. Um, I just looked around and I go, this just means we all really care about what the final product is going to be. And that's one thing that um, I can say definitively in my heart of hearts um, working with Stonebridge Homes so our, our relationship with them I truly truly feel that every single person that is involved in their communities really cares about the final and end product and um, their customer satisfaction because we wouldn't have spent the past six hours literally arguing over what tile we like we liked best if we weren't um, 
passionate con- about passionate it. about it and just it, it kind of consumes us mm-hmm. it, it's definitely um it's become a true passion of mine in the real estate world for sure yeah so this what you did today is for a model home Correct. so the process is different when somebody comes in and they want to build with you yeah. so they're putting in a reservation right yep and so maybe why don't you talk a little bit about the process of well, where do you want to start do you want to yeah. start with you know from reservation to end or do you want to start how this meeting would be different for somebody who wants to come in and design something themselves well so we'll do reservation to end because i think it's important um so when you just like so take Cochise city estates we do at least three open houses there every week we're there wednesdays saturdays and sundays um, but you can also make a, appointments so if at any point you wanted to see any of these communities ho- hopefully or potentially we would have a model home to show you whether in of any of the different models usually you'll have since we're single families and duplexes we have a model single family and we have a model of each of our duplex styles um, that we can show anybody at even, at any given point in time. Two things on that is the model homes, and this is important. So we're the meeting that I just came from. We were designing a model home that will eventually be for sale. Mm-hmm. Little um, trade secret: the model homes are always the best deals in the communities. And why do you say that, Mary? <laughs> because so. Maybe we argued about tile for the past five hours um, for no reason, and you actually hate the tile, but once the house is complete, you can't change it. So because of, for that reason, the builder gives pretty significant incentives on their model homes. So you get a home that has been kind of done up with all the bells and whistles for a discounted price. Um, because so, you're not the one choosing it. It's the builder and you yeah. <laughs> arguing about it for hours on end. Yeah, so if you like... Um, you know, if you like dark hardwood flooring, well, a trend right now is really light hardwood flooring. So you're going to see that a lot in new construction. Um, we're putting a lot of really light natural colors in, in our homes. And if that didn't appeal to your specific aesthetic, well, it can't really be changed once it's put in or the builder's not going to rip out, you know, 3000 square feet of hardwood flooring. Yeah. So he gives a discount with making, making that a consideration when there is, um, an incentive. We don't call Mm -hmm. it a discount, an incentive Mm -hmm. on the properties. So, but those homes are the ones that you're going to tour. So you go through, you tour the houses. If you like one of the houses or you like the community is probably the first and foremost that um, you need to be looking into. You would select your style floor plan, the home site that it's going to go on, and then put in a what we call a reservation. Also with new with um, the model homes, it's you're getting new construction, you're purchasing new construction. Yes, you're not choosing every single thing, but even if you are at a point where like you know they're showing the model home, but you can still switch out maybe the lighting fixtures or something, whatever, whatever, wherever they are in the process of building the model home. But with the model home. Yes, you get all the bells and whistles and everything, but you can also have a traditional closing timeline yeah. too. So you're getting a brand new home that no one's ever lived in, yep. so new construction, but you can close in 30 days. Thousand percent. With building, <laughs> you can't build a house in 30 days. <laughs> so there, there's like a nuance with it, right? That you, yes, you're getting a brand new house, but you definitively know when you're going to move in and you don't. Some people don't want to go through the process of making all of their selections because... Yeah. As you can see, again, five hours later, we hadn't even finished. Yeah. Um, Because there's just so much to talk about and you want to be very confident in your decisions and know that you're going to love your home at the end of the day because you are spending all of this money on it. So sometimes, and I would probably choose this route, it's easier to just have somebody else do it for you. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, But so at, at reservation... Right. You would. So taking the model homes out of the equation for a minute, a reservation is really used for um, ground up construction. And that reservation is an agreement between you and the builder to exclusively talk about that specific home site or and or that specific home for a period of time. Um, usually there is, so there was, there would be a document that you would sign and there is traditionally a fully refundable deposit that's put down at that time. Mm -hmm. It's, um, different across the board with any developer, but somewhere usually between a thousand and $2,000 is what, um, I've seen. And if during those two weeks you're working with the develop, the, the developer, the, um, your agent, 
the listing agent and you're usually going through all of the details of the house. Any questions that you might have, if you are going to, this is the big one, if you're gonna upgrade from any of the general specifications of the house uh, and what that cost would be and what it looks like for you. At the end of that reservation period, you sign a purchase and sales agreement. Purchase and sales agreement, another very traditionally, another deposit, like a traditional resale, I mean, mm-hmm. another deposit is due at that time. And it, within your purchase and sales agreement, unlike a resale, every single thing that is going to go into that house is listed within the purchase and sales agreement, right? So your building plans, your general specifications, which outline what is going into the house at the base price of the house, because there's a difference between the base price and the end price. Mm -hmm. That's what people try not to talk about that, but it is. There's a difference between the base price and the end price of the house. Um, Then your options and upgrades, if you're going beyond the base specifications and what that looks like for you. Um, Any warranties are gonna be included in that. Um, I think that's really any, then there's general buyers, riders, and sellers, riders, but those are the three or four really important components Mm -hmm. that need to be in that purchase. So traditionally, what do you see for timeline wise from, you know, someone puts in a reservation to signing a purchase and sales? How long does that usually last? So I'll speak specifically for us because it will matter uh, on house size, on where they're at with the lots, um, and your builder. So every builder, and we probably skipped over this, every builder is different. Mm-hmm. This process is going to look different for every builder. So it's important that you have somebody who can tell you how the process should work and if something's looking abnormal or if if things are veering off in a direction that they're not so comfortable with, because that can happen yeah. too. Like, yeah. New construction can be a little bit about spidey sense, right? Like, oh, this isn't kind of how it's <laughs> Spidey supposed- sense? Yeah, I had one of those. Um, uh, this isn't really how it's supposed to go or like if you're if you're feeling as if um, builders or agents are being non-responsive that's never a good sign mm-hmm. like before before you get into contract with them if they're being non-responsive to you at the beginning they're probably not going to be too responsive throughout the process right yeah i i feel like i've said this a million times on the show however you start your transaction whether it's new construction or resale or whatever it, it sets the tone for the whole you are 100% transaction correct. so do you really want to be you know hooked up with someone for 6 months you know, building a house if it's anxiety ridden. Yeah. Um, like you gave me at four 30 today, <laughs> I might, I'll be there at six o'clock. Um, you know, it's, it sets the tone and yeah. do you want to be dealing with that? Because we've heard ho- horror stories, yeah. you know, and, and you do have that time period where you can, you know, walk away get your refund back or get a refund and, you know, you just go your separate ways. Yeah. But you want to, you want to be really, Um, researching your builders what kind how long have they how long have they been in business how long have they been working with their subcontractors what is their history for delivering on time Um, what is their history in general what communities have they done can I go to any of the communities and look at what it looks like as it's being built and at and maybe another community that's been finished Um, because that will give you especially with new like ground at the beginning stages of new construction a new construction community I should say it's very tough for the average buyer to visualize what the end product of the entire community would potentially look like. Because, mm-hmm. um, I mean, how would you? It's not what it's not what you do every day. Yeah. Um, so I think it's important that you kind of have your list of questions prepared for either the listing agent or maybe if you're meeting with the developer, kind of go through everything. You know, how do you handle this problem? How do you handle what happens if this happens? What does your warranty pro- program look like? Well, also, is there, um, does the builder have some sort of like 30 day, like they can extend the closing 30 days or yep. however, um, you know, if things, because, you know, the, for a while, I, I remember during maybe Copperwood, like there was, there was, you know, a shortage, shortage yeah. in wood. We, Literally we need, lumber that we build yeah. the houses out of. Lumber. Yes. We got to, you know, if we can't get lumber, what are we supposed to build the houses with? Absolutely. <laughs> so. No, that was really, that was a really scary time too. But those are all things to consider. And I, I'm, I'm a huge advocate too, and this is kind of veering off to a side, side note. You need to have a tolerance in new construction, right? Uh, or you can't have as much rigidity 
as I think you people want to approach it with because it's a it's a living breathing thing right as, a, as if you're going ground up as the house is being built there could be something and I actually know this from experience because Sam and I you know and Holly lived through building an in-law there are things that even me as experienced as I am um, in this particular topic I it uh, something would arise and I would question it I'd be like well why is it this way I mm -hmm. don't understand mm -hmm. but and and he, was, he would explain it to me and I'd be like okay well that makes sense or you know maybe we couldn't get the windows that we initially had wanted and we had to get different windows yeah you know you have to sometimes I'm not saying that that happens often but it might develop that maybe the flooring that you selected is discontinued and you know what at we have to pick out another flooring that I mean that's happened to me that's happened to us yeah um and the more open-mindedness the more ease that you can go into it with the easier those conversations are going to be um and the more you can trust the partners that you're working with your buyer's agent the listing agent from a transparent uh, and the builder from a transparency standpoint the easier it's going to be on you and everybody else i feel like i'm lecturing i'm sorry <laughs> that's okay <laughs> i'm like what <laughs> um well everybody be nice and play well in the sandbox and then we will all get to the end goal and you're gonna be super super happy when you're in your new house yes i mean why who wouldn't want a new house mm -hmm. i want a new house well so Imagine, so we're, we're, I'm like designing this beautiful kitchen today, beautiful mm -hmm. kitchen, like my dream kitchen. Yeah. And I have to go home to my 1980s kitchen. It's very functional. However. Yeah, but one day you're going to redo it, right? Yeah, and I have, I've had all the ideas. Yeah. But, you know, you are patience focusing on something else. You're getting married. Not, yeah, patience is not my virtue. <laughs> You're paying for a wedding. Yeah. So maybe after that, you can you can do the kitchen. Yeah, <laughs> um, you're listening to Talk Real Estate Roundtable. If you have any questions or want to join in on the discussion, you can call George at the studio at 781-837-4900. Again, we're talking all things new construction. And I think it's probably important for us to mention right now that we are not joined by the lovely Sharon McNamara because she is actually with Mackenzie, her beautiful daughter, celebrating her birthday. Woohoo! Happy, Happy birthday, birthday Mackenzie! Um, so yeah, they're down in Newport. They're um, grabbing dinner. So I thought that was special. That was that was nice. Yeah, it was very uh, cute. Um, but with new con so so I'll jump back to like the purchase and sale aspect. Mm -hmm. um, once you get to purchase and sale, that's when from my perspective, that's when your timeline really starts ticking, right? So for us with Stonebridge Homes, we say we're approximately six months to build from the time that you sign a purchase and sales agreement and or the foundation is poured. And why I say and or is because hopefully your foundation is being poured right around the same time that the um, purchase and sale is being signed, but weather permitting, right? So if for some reason you're signing a purchase and sale and the ground is absolutely thawed and they cannot dig, for an extra month, then you know your foundation is is a month out from that six month period. Mm -hmm. I uh, once once I see that, I start to say, okay, well our our timeline might need to be a little bit flexible. If we're not able to get the foundation in pretty quickly there after signing purchase and sales agreement, sometime I I would if I were the buyer's agent start preparing my buyer that we could potentially see a little bit of an extension coming down the road doesn't necessarily mean that that's going to happen, but I think the more prepared you can be, the yeah. more that you can try and predict the timeline going forward, the, um, the less stressed out you'll be. I know we talked about, um, you know, the meetings that you have, and you're picking out all these things, but can you talk about specs for a second? Yeah, yeah. So what, what are specs? What are some things that you see sort of either across the board or specific to the communities that you work in? Yep. What are specs? Specs. <laughs> Not <laughs> spectacles. No, but... I wear glasses. I, I was wearing mine earlier. Um, general specifications. So that is going to be different for every single builder. Um, but builders outline from foundation to exterior to utilities, um, insulation, drywall, paint colors, windows, doors, um, flooring, what your choices, like what your potential choices are, what type of flooring is standard with, within each room. That is super, super, super important. Mm -hmm. um, it is If it is not listed in there, then it is likely, um, it, it will say like all other rooms to be carpeted. So there's no room for interpretation within these general specifications. Yeah. 
you, you really want to go through those specs and understand what is ha what's going on in each room. Um, it'll also go through like appliances and lighting, um, landscaping. Land landscaping will be huge, especially this time of year. So what does the builder's landscaping package look like? Yeah, and the specs can change over the time uh, that it takes the developer to develop the whole entire community, correct? Because, you know, I can just think of, you know, a couple different specs just being changed based off of, you know, price of how they, yep. you know, what they were going to be paying for. And is it cost effective for them to include these things or are buyers going to want to purchase these things? Yeah. Um, and we also, you know, you said carpet in the bedroom, but like there's standard, then there's level one, then there's level two. And like, there's just so much to go. <laughs> you're yeah. like smiling yeah. and laughing at me. It's it, because you're you're 100 percent right. There is just so much information. And that's why I think if if you're not familiar with it, sometimes you don't know the questions to ask. So having a buyer's agent who is familiar with the process and what it looks like can be invaluable. Mm -hmm. Right. So I, I know me personally, I can read specifications and I'm like, okay, or, and or walk through a model house and say, that's not standard, that's not standard, that's not mm -hmm. standard, just by looking. Mm -hmm. um, you know, most, there you have some builders who include a lot of extra options mm -hmm. um, at a very significant price. In, so that yeah. could be included in their base price. And then you have builders who keep the base price um, minimal, but then, but they also keep the base specifications pretty minimal. Mm -hmm. And then you can add on from there as you desire, right? Well, also, I, I think maybe the Grady's, um, some of the builders that they work with, they, you could get um, sort of a, a limit. Okay, here's $30,000 that you can spend on the kitchen. Yeah. Go ahead. Like, you, they, like the builder gives the buyer a budget yeah. and then they are told where to go and then they sort of spend and anything over that, then they would have to, you know, pay for the additional. But it's sort of built into the price of the home that the builder agreed to buy, to, to build. So, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, there's two different ways. I mean, there's a million different ways that new construction can be done. It's all about that, that developer and what their processes look like. For us specifically, we don't, um, Stonebridge does not give um, allowances on a very, I should say on a very, very rare occasion. Um, they have a multitude of different cabinets, a multitude of different um, tiles, hardwood flooring um, that you would go to at their sales office in Southeast and, and or um, some communities have actual sales office within their own communities that you can look through, okay, well, this is what my standard option cabinetry looks like. This is what my upgrade one cabinetry mm -hmm. looks like. These are what my standard tile choices are. These are what my upgrade one tile choices are. And during that reservation period, I think that's probably the most important period mm -hmm. um, for me anyway, is because that's when you're building what I call the dream house. So we're building every the, the wish list of every absolutely possible thing that you would ever want to see in your house. And then we're either saying, great, we're cool with this number, or, you know what, we got to scale back and we have to make wiser decisions with where yeah. our funds are going. Yeah. Um, and that's all, you should be doing that before you sign a purchase and sales agreement so that, you know, after you sign a purchase and sale, you don't find out like, oh, I actually, I didn't know that I could do X, Y, and Z, or I didn't know that we, there was an option to do this, or you don't have your builder coming to you and being like, oh, you want black windows instead of white windows, that's $15,000. Yeah. Probably more. <laughs> and you might know that because I know that you want black windows yeah, in your probably, house. Probably more. How many <laughs> windows is that? It depends. Um, um, well, just, just staying on agency for just two seconds, do you feel like it's easier as a listing agent of new construction, do you feel it's easier when you um, – have a buyer come in and they don't have a buyer's agent Ooh, that's or a question or um is it easier when they do have a buyer's agent to sort of be able to communicate with so that that is certainly a loaded question and i feel conflicted on it i'll be entirely <laughs> okay I'm, why I'm, so i'm entirely conflicted on it because there, I just literally, we just closed on a unit at Cochise Estates with an agent, um, a buyer's agent that I, we know here at Boston Connect really, really well. Um, and she was, again, invaluable to that um, transaction. She was on top of everything. Mm -hmm. She very much um, 
knew how to communicate, like knew how to communicate with me, also knew how to communicate with her client to mm -hmm. keep her client um, calm and explaining to them what's normal, what we should see. Yeah. She was familiar with our developer um, from another project. So she's like, nope, this is their process. This is how this is how they do everything. So she was really able to emotionally manage her client, which proved invaluable at the end of the day. Loved that transaction with her. It was phenomenal. But I've also had it very many times mm -hmm. where that is not the case, right? And it's very important during a new construction um, transaction that um, people are communicating efficiently. And if there's any lapse in communication, sometimes there's a perceivedness that it's on the listing agent side or the developer side, and that's not always the case. Mm -hmm. um, so we the process becomes you, you, Melissa, you're the buyer. Sharon McNamara is your buyer's agent. So you have a question for the developer. You're going to go to Sharon McNamara, your buyer's agent. Sharon McNamara is going to come to me, Mary Baker. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go to my seller and say, seller, this is what the buyer's agent is asking me. Um, seller is going to give me the answer. I'm going to go to Sharon McNamara. Sharon McNamara is going to go to you. Mm -hmm. So you, you get this like little... Very much like a resale. Yeah. you. It's it's like you each have separate representation, mm -hmm. but communication is strictly between the agents. And sometimes just by nature of adding more people to the process, there can be longer times from communication. Yeah. When you remove the buyer's agent from um, the equation, two, I see two things happen. One is no matter, unless the buyer already has a relationship with me, I just use me in this case, me as the listing agent, um, no matter what, it's always going to be perceived that I am solely looking out for the best interest of the builder because mm -hmm. I'm, I'm employed by the builder, right? Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm marketing for him. I'm his seller's agent. So trust can very quickly become, mm -hmm. well, I know you're telling me that that's normal, but is it normal? Right. Right. So you don't have that person, that middle person who's advising you and advocating or advocating for you or um, telling you, you know, just what's what's normal, what's to be expected. You're hearing it direct from somebody that you perceive is is the seller. Yeah. Right. And honestly, I think, you know, again, we've said this, like new construction is a different beast. So it's so important if you are going to have representation as a as a buyer purchasing new construction, it is so important to have a buyer's agent that is well-versed and familiar Thousand familiar percent. with the process. Yes, every builder is different. However, not that much, you know? It's very like, very much like, this is how you build the house, this is our process yep. type of thing. And communication is key. It's the most important thing in any transaction with real estate ever. You know, and and it's so it's important to if you are going to have representation as a buyer's agent, you you need to be well versed. So think about it in this way, and it, it, this kind of can put it into perspective a little bit. A traditional resale is going to have um, usually thirty to forty five days of communication between parties, and then everybody kind of goes, everybody's happy, and they go their separate ways, right? Yeah. New construction. If we're talking ground up, you're looking at before you sign purchase and sale, probably a month of communication, two weeks to a month of communication, mm -hmm. you sign purchase and sale. Hopefully you're looking at six months, but you could potentially, new construction is prone to delays and that's just reality. Mm -hmm. So maybe extend out that it, as much as any builder is going to try and meet their timelines. And I will say Stonebridge has a very, very good track record for doing so. But even if even if they do, say minimally you're in, a, in that relationship with... Um, the developer and with the agents for seven months. Mm -hmm. That is a long period of time to put your trust into somebody else and your faith into the process, right? Mm -hmm. for, and it's a long time to emotionally be connected to the build. Yeah. So if the trust isn't there, if transparency isn't there, if um, you know your feeling is if communication is lapsing, it's it's bound for some feelings. Some feelings. some feelings to put it gently some feelings some feelings to arise yeah i you know what i think that i am also conflicted again about that yeah. um i think obviously the communication is very um key and sort of too many cooks in the kitchen can um be 
tough. Mm-hmm. Um, I'll let you cook as, as long <laughs> as it's not spaghetti squash. <laughs> Um, but you know, so it, I feel like it, you know, it is easier to sort of be able to talk to the the buyer directly because then you're hearing it firsthand. However, every buyer has the right to be represented by somebody. And, and just, if you are a buyer out there and you want to purchase new construction, please ask your buyer's agent questions, you know, even if you have to Google them or you can call us and ask us, even if you're not even going to use us, which, what should you be asking? As, As a listing agent for like, so again, our team is um, a part of two new construction communities right now I advocate for buyers agents people ask me all the time well am I gonna get a deal yeah this is this is the misconception I'm gonna get a deal if I come to you directly and I say no, I don't set I, the I, price of lumber I, I was like, <laughs> you what what happens um, yeah the pricing has nothing to do with myself um, or my relationship with you number one and number two if you feel as if you need a buyer's agent to advocate for you throughout this process, I believe that you should have one. Yeah. I, I believe that they can be invaluable and sound like a brokered record to this process for you, and you will be better off having one. Mm-hmm. Uh, you will, you'll feel better off having one. However, it's completely, it's completely your decision. Yeah. Um, and plus, you, you know, you said earlier that you are there at least a minimum of three times a week, yeah. you know, at least at Cochise in West Bridgewater. So, um, what are you there? When, every Wednesday from five to seven yeah. and every Saturday and Sunday from 11 to two. Yep. So minimally, uh, minimally, you know, and then obviously you can always set up an appointment and see it and, you know, do you have multiple, um, things that you can see over there, but, um, just to get back to, um, model homes for a second it's so important i feel like for builders to build like a couple different style homes for people to see because i know for me like sometimes it's hard for me to envision certain things you know and i admitted this a couple weeks ago you know i'm looking to purchase my first home and somebody recently over the weekend asked me oh you know or said i bet you've bought a ton of stuff for your new house and i'm like i've bought nothing because i don't know what i'm buying i don't i can't envision i don't know what my style is i feel like i have to see it first Yeah, I have to see the space first to see, like, you know, do I want white, you know, I was going to say China. I don't know. I'm not China. Uh, you know, anything. And um, and I feel that way with new construction. And, and you know, some people are like me. I have a hard time, you know, envisioning it. But when I see it, I'm, I like to be able to touch things, yeah. f- see things. I'm a visual learner. I always have been a visual learner. So I, I'm a visual person. I want to go to a model home and I want to be able to see a couple different styles. Yeah, it's, uh, it's hugely important. It's taking it's taking that plan that you're looking at on paper and literally bringing it into life. Yeah. So if you're not look you, you're not looking in two D, you're working in three D, right? Mm-hmm. So I'm able to walk through. I get the I get the feeling for the space of the rooms, um, and especially on new designs, right? That can be incredibly if it's tried and true and something that the, the developer is constantly producing in several different communities. Sometimes it's easy to at least drive by or get an idea from yeah. you know there's virtual tours or. Um, model photos that most of us will have but if it's new and we don't we haven't executed the plan yet it can be very hard um, for people to envision Um, but I forget where I was going with that yeah I think I think model homes are 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 key to success of they are essential essential they're essential homes (laughs) maybe we shouldn't call them model homes we should call them essential essential homes. homes Well, we were um, we were considered an essential business through through COVID. Oh yeah. So well, you need housing, to housing. Is, housing is essential. Yeah, there you go. Um, yeah, I just I I can remember doing the open houses over at um, Copperwood, and we had like multiple different. Um, you know, mm-hmm. houses for people to see. And, you know, we would start at one style and then go to the next style and then go to the next style because I think at one point we had three or four all at once that we were showing. And everyone was, like, gra- gravitating towards, like, one style home. Remember, at, at one the point, I think, brand. you know, Bisher or Owen called and was like, okay, maybe we need to stop showing this yeah. model home because <laughs> everybody who's put in a reservation we're, is we're is this house. This, this <laughs> is this house. house. Um, but, you know, people like what they like. Absolutely. Uh, we called it our showstopper house. Yeah. Um, but it, it is. And I think another, so we hear this a lot too, is like, oh, why does the builder put so many um, options in his model, in the model homes? 
they do that purposefully because you have to imagine. So if you're if you're building, you know, a hundred houses a year, their model homes are really where they shine, right? Mm -hmm. they, they're getting to show off their skill set. They're getting to show off, you know, what they can really do. The beautiful homes that you can build. That doesn't necessarily mean. I mean that everybody will choose every single option that they put in all yeah. of their homes. Yeah. Like we feature shiplap um, in a lot of our model homes right now. Mm -hmm. It's nice, but would you think, would you think to do it? Um, just, you know, you, oh, I want to put some shiplap here. Like maybe not, probably not. Mm -hmm. um, we've done board and batten. We've done waterfall quartz countertops. Does everybody love the, that? Maybe not. So do you have to do that? No. But is, is it something that you know that the builder can do because you've seen it featured in one of his model homes? Absolutely. And that's the point. That is the point. We only have I about five passionate. minutes. <laughs> we only have about five minutes left in the show. So why don't you, are there anything, um, any other key points that you want to talk about before the end of the show? So I'm going to be really, really quick. Um, so home inspections versus final walkthroughs, they are different. So on a model home or a home that is constructed, you might have a home inspection. Um, very often, I mean, you are entitled to have a home inspection on any single singular property that you ever purchase. Uh, but the process for um, a ground up construction with Stonebridge Homes, um, for them specifically, is you do a final walkthrough with them a couple of days, maybe several days before closing. They call that you're kind of going through with the site foreman. Um, looking through every room, looking for any cosmetic defects that you might find, looking for, um, you know, and he's t he's teaching you about the house itself. Mm -hmm. um, and that's different from an actual home inspection, mm -hmm. uh, where a home inspection, an, inspe an inspector who has no affiliation with the builder is coming through and essentially going through the house to give you a rundown of what the structure is. And what's the process after closing? You know, is there a little bit of a time frame where the builder can come back and you can say, hey, you know, this, something's not right with this, or this one, this isn't working, or, you know, this door isn't closing right? Like, yep. can they still come in and... Yep, so not with every builder, but most builders, um, I, would, I think it's actually Massachusetts, offer a uh, limited one-year home warranty so uh, and whatever that home warranty covers they will come back within that year and and repair for you for stonebridge specifically they actually allow um 30 days after you move in you give them so you've done your final walkthrough punch list right a couple days before mm -hmm. closing 30 days post closing you'll also do another walkthrough and give them another punch well it's not really, you'll do a self walkthrough. The builder's not going to come back. Yeah. But you're living in the house. You've noticed that a door isn't quite hitting the striker appropriately. You send them another list of things um, that potentially you want tweaked. And then a year after, because in New England, we do get settlement cracks. That is just fact of life. Um, within a year, you also they also give you another opportunity to do another punch list and come in and freshen up the house. Plus, they have a 10-year limited home warranty. So, like, they're extra extra yeah. extra covered <laughs> yeah um so that's their process so you have the builder just doesn't like up and disappear post closing and you're like oh well now i'm i'm stuck i have i have no recourse i have no option um again that's all detailed in your purchase and sales agreement well especially if they're still building the development <laughs> you know that they're not going <laughs> anywhere you anytime see soon. them driving all day <laughs> yeah just stand on your porch and just <laughs> watch them driving by hey. hi and my door won't close mm. properly. <laughs> yeah. If, you, if you're working with one of those, don't do that. Um, um, I know we only have like 30 seconds, but I do want to just say, because I did say we're working on two communities yeah. with them. So we have Cochise Estates and West Bridgewater, which we gave our open house times for. We have several different um, single family home designs that we're currently offering, as well as duplex style designs that we're offering, hitting a variety of different price points. So um, if you want any information, please let us know. And then we also... We're just premiering our Cushing Trail development in Hanson, which will be a duplex style community of several different townhomes. So pricing is to be determined on that, but we mm -hmm. will be getting live with marketing very, very soon. How can people get in touch with you? Um, so me specifically, my number is 774-444-7761, or you can call us here at the office, 781-826-8000. And they'll get you connected with me. Yeah, bostonconnect.com. Thanks, everybody, for Bye. listening. We will be back on Saturday morning. Bye. We talked very fast. Okay. On that one. Yeah.